imagine a universal language. Bum bum ba dum. Max Verstappen. This is the car, this is the track, and this is me the first time I discovered like the spam spray cooking oil. <laughs> you had to see what it tastes like. We are back in the Porsche Cup car. There is me, Joey, directly ahead of me. There's Joey, car number six. I'm car number eight. Lots of people on the grid, 30 people on the grid, more people than I have ever been in a race with in the P Cup. Car number seven, supposed to be starting directly ahead of us, slash alongside us. I thought we were gonna go single file. Um, that was, uh, that, that's what I had heard about this series, is that you typically go single file, even though it's like, it puts you side by side. He is trying to go side by side with Joey. I was a bit confused. The car who's supposed to be starting behind me puts himself alongside before we go green and eventually actually tries to overtake me before we go green through this first corner i was super confused i didn't know who i was supposed to be with where this guy is overtaking me literally before we even go green across for to start the first lap and there's somebody sideways already i yeah i tried to leave space there end up this was i, I mean I guess it was a fitting welcome back into the Porsche Cup. Uh, this guy had the right idea, starting from the pits. Genius. And let's take a look back at what the hell just happened. Car number three, who's supposed to be starting in P4, is doing that same thing the white guy did to me. He's literally overtaking P... Car number five, who's supposed to start P3, he has overtaken him before they are anywhere close to going green, and he's consistently trying to overtake this guy. I mean, like... I guess, like, I guess you don't get a penalty for overtaking before green, and this guy is not having it. They're going side by side, very similar to what happened to me and the other guy, except it's not going to end as well. Um, I mean, well, they do it a lot worse. He goes into the wall and then throws the car into reverse, believe it or not. The entire grid is coming. We eat shit. This guy eats shit. I... <laughs> I don't know. I, I tried to leave space for the white car. I recognized that was happening. I didn't think the guy was going to reverse. I guess I could have gone up onto that curb, but I figured I might end up losing the car if I did that. So I tried to move over uh, to the left side. I think the problem here is that there was so much space between us that he actually has to cut in at the last second. So even if this guy hadn't hit reverse, I'm pretty sure we still would have died, but he does hit reverse and we do die. I we were probably going to die anyway. You shake that down. Best option for me would have been to back out. Car number 10 making it through there beautifully. Visa with a sexy little like J turn there and nobody else is injured in his story. The car who kind of started all of this is going to get back on track and I think just try and make up as many positions as he can in terms of people who have already reset to the pits because his car is cooked. I asked him what happened and he said, uh, sorry, I got mad, basically. So that was a good excuse. We end in P25. Joey does have a really good race. By the time the final lap comes around, I mean, he's right on the tail of car number 10, and they're battling for P5. Joey wasn't able to get that in time. He's going to cross the line, basically right behind this guy who gets a major slide on the last corner but holds it. Uh, so P6 for Joey. Great finish for him and a good welcome back to the this car for him and also the Norwich Life, man. Absolutely love this track. So looking at the results, there we are p25 quite a big hit we did not make it a single corner uh yeah big big losses on both sides of the board there joey good finish to him uh you've seen him before he's super consistent not not surprised by that at all we decided to do a qualifying run to try and get ahead of whatever the hell that was that green guy from that last race i think his quality was like a 45 something so my objective was to be faster than that because i did not want to get involved with somebody again who's trying to overtake between uh, before the green flag now, for the Nordschleife Quali sessions, you only get one lap. You don't have enough time to heat up your tires, so the tires are cold. If you get an off track at any point, it does not count, and there's only one qualifying between every race session, and the races are two hours apart, so I did not want to mess this up. Priority was to get a lap down at all and just make up as many positions in Quali as we can. Uh, if we could get above a 45 and get ahead of that guy, who that, that green guy in, or the guy in the Rexy car, I should say, then that's a bigger bonus. But main objective is just to get a lap down, not mess up our qualifying. And we come pretty close here to doing that. A little bit of a slide, catch the car. This is where I feel like always tend to get a little bit of a slide if you're not mentally 
super aware that you could get a little bit of a slide. I see so many people die there in race. It's happened to me many times. Uh, almost ended my qualifying session, but I was able to bring this lap all of the way home for a 644.7. So that should put us ahead of Rexy, which is all that I needed. Super happy with that. We're probably not going to win any races or get any uh, P1s with that time, but we are going to start in P2, actually, which was pretty awesome. As car number six, wasn't expecting that lap to put me this high up. And uh, once again, so this is our next race in the formation lap, starting in P2. And we've got Red Deck, I don't know how to say his last name, very fast driver uh, to our right slash in front of us. Was really hoping I could keep up with him, but on formation lap, he just completely slows down and I was so confused. I didn't know what to do. My monkey brain like really wanted me to just park the car, uh, but then my other brain that was like, no, you just got screwed before the start line was like, okay, let's just uh, see where this goes. And yeah, people are going around him. I don't know. Are they gonna get black flags? Honestly, I've basically never done a rolling start. He's in reverse. His engine had shut off and there's people <laughs> just... <laughs> Yeah, I decided, okay, well, I guess that I'm P1. And this is just the duality of iRacing. I am crossing the line to start the race with, I think I had like a 10 second gap or eight second gap to the people behind me, but those people also had black flags. So going around the first corner of the Nordschleife and looking at my relative, it's just going up. You can see there are some people actually with black flags there. And then behind them, the closest person is 12 and a half seconds so didn't really have to, I, I mean honestly as long as i just didn't wreck the car there should be no way that somebody catches me he's not even through sector one i'm already at flu plats and yeah like i said i'm just gonna reiterate it that this is literally like the duality of eye racing i did have a moment on the final lap uh closest car at this point is 11 seconds behind me and i go directly into the wall that gap is going to come down quite a bit but 11 seconds you know i would i would have to damage my engine in order for that gap to be closed and i don't think that that damaged my engine the guy behind me was what much much faster than me i also wasn't driving my fastest laps i knew that uh, all I had to do was not wreck the car. There's no, I mean, what? I'd have to be four seconds slower than him for three laps for him to catch me at this point. Doubt that's happening. Uh, so I took it pretty slow, pretty reserved, and ended up crossing the line, still with a pretty substantial gap of about like eight seconds. The relative was doing something wild there. P1, baby. Probably my least exciting win that I have ever and may ever have. Really unfortunate situation at the beginning of that race for every, literally everybody in the lobby except for me. Taking a look at the results, I mean, it counts. It still counts, baby. That's that's a dub. So we are green in both areas. Let's go. Our lap wasn't anything to write home about. Probably would not have won that race otherwise. It at the very least would have been a really good battle. Slipstream does make a difference. But I understood that I was off of the pace at this point. So hopped into a practice. And I honestly, at this point, have not done that many laps of this track. Uh, and, and it's honestly really, really difficult to drive this car after driving so many laps of the Miata. Like my steering was terrible. My throttle sensitivity was abysmal. My braking was actually not too bad. I feel like I locked back into the braking pretty well, but it was really my throttle and my steering that I had picked up these habits from, uh, from the Miata. And I was truly struggling to get them to change back to fitting this car on a hot lap here in practice and we run into this guy right here which kind of sucks because i wanted to see how fast i could go but he ends up moving out of the way for us pretty quickly so not all of that much time lost and i mean this lap as a whole wasn't a great lap but it was still it was a 42.6 which was better than i thought i could do i was looking to maybe do 43s uh, with full fuel but 42 i am very happy about so another race and we're starting p2 once again the same guy is ahead of us we got mike bowen behind us philip Mruck, uh and others behind formation lap let's see if this one can be somewhat of a normal race at this point that's really what i wanted immediately falling in single file i think i've learned that if you don't literally make your car take up the entirety of the track somebody's going to try and overtake you before it goes green which i think is super odd but uh it is the way it is. So I let uh, Radek get ahead of me immediately. We're warming up our tires all of the way down here as you don't really have that much time to. Flag goes green and we are off, staying on the inside. The guy behind us is right behind us and uh, I could have been closer to P1, but it is what it is. Cold tires, first lap, 
do make a pretty substantial difference, especially in sector one on this car track combo. Few cars behind us, car number 17, I think his name is Joshua Love, about to have quite a moment. I believe cold tires played a part, goes very deep around the first corner, slides out into the wall. Everybody is going to be able to avoid him. He is facing backwards and out of embarrassment, he's just gonna completely leave the race. No damage, I think, sustained there or very light damage, but he was not having it. Halfway into sector one, P4 doing the Lord's work and separating the rest of the grid from the top three basically creating a roadblock there. Car number five looking to take advantage of that, but not quite going to be able to. Probably smarter to settle back and uh, just let this one play out, see how the pace goes between everybody back there. And uh, we are totally separated from them now with a three second gap between P3 and P4, Alessandro. A lot of time, uh, not a ton of pressure. I do have the job currently of making sure that we are able to stay with the leader because I want to to win this race obviously two wins would be pretty awesome and the guy behind me car number three is pretty much relying on me at this point not to mess up and separate us there's not a ton he can do here to uh, make me go faster so i'm trying my best for the both of us to stay on this guy and give us both an opportunity for the win throughout the entirety of the race that's my goal does it work like that well through uh foxhole and really i mean decent run through there i was surprised at this point that i was able to keep up with redek he had been driving, I believe, quite a lot of this. I wouldn't say he was on an alien pace, but he was consistently driving my best lap without making any any incidents, which consistency was my problem at this point. Hadn't quite settled back in. Lifting for this left right definitely should not have done that. The gap immediately begins to open up and uh, losing that little bit of crucial slipstream. We still have it, but I'm a lot more reliant on my own pace at this point in order to stay on him. Mm, and making a mistake through the uh, the tight left-hander at the bottom of that hill. There's the view from the car behind, and you can see just how much of a difference that makes on exit. Now, Mike could have looked for a move up the inside there, but he decides better of it. Wasn't quite close enough. It might have been better if he did just make that move for the both of us because... I think something about that got into my head and I was like, oh man, I'm ho I, now I'm holding this guy up. I immediately went to this, this mindset of, I just want Mike to go around me. You know, maybe he's faster and maybe he can keep up with Redek at this point uh, better than I can because this is kind of that last ditch effort from the both of us. Like, look how far ahead Redek is. Mike is trying to push me, but I kind of wish he would have gone around me. I think I did actually say, you can go up the inside here. Um, I don't know if he had his mic muted, but that's not what he did. He was relying on me, and uh, weak mindset from myself, honestly. I, I, I should have just really locked in and tried to chase this guy down, but something about, I, I think I just wasn't confident. I had been driving so much Miata, and I was like, you know, I'm not up to pace to where I used to be at this moment in time. And slowly, Redek through the second half of this lap would just pull further and further away. Major separator was the jump coming up here as I did something bad habit of mine that I used to do quite a lot and I haven't mm, focused enough on is that I was over slowing way too much through the jump that allows Mike to kind of get right back on me I'm pretty sure Mike is like lifting behind me to make sure he doesn't put like just to make sure he doesn't run into the back of me essentially and keeps a decent gap but heading towards the second carousel and we're three seconds behind Redek we are going going to be receiving no slipstream on the Dottinger, which is absolutely terrible. It means that we probably need to either be pushed by Mike or Mike needs to pass us, which is honestly what I wanted to happen. I had had a really, really rough first lap, and this was this was like my first lap of actual racing so far, and I just kind of let myself down. So in my head at this point, I'm thinking, okay, let's have Mike go ahead of us. He's pretty far ahead of us, uh, Redek that is, but there's still a chance, you know, maybe Mike is extremely fast and he's able to catch him. So I'm going to let him through. I actually end up lifting down the Dottinger because I'm like, we have two laps left. Worst case scenario, I just follow Mike around and put a move on him on the last lap of the Dottinger if he's not as fast as I think. So that's kind of the two places where my head was at. It's either Mike is really fast and we catch this guy or we're able to make a pass on the last lap. Lap number two begins. It's a three lap race and we are quickly going to find out that I, I, I'm still kind of battling in my head what the true nature of Mike's driving was here because as soon as we let him pass, it almost felt like he was purposefully slowing down 
especially in the first like couple of sectors of this track. I'm not sure if he was intentionally slowing down to perhaps try and force me into making a mistake or um I, I don't I don't know maybe he just wasn't quite up to pace he was being a little bit cautious in in the first bit of the lap he does get a majorly good run through there we're, we're settling back and playing this one pretty safe but it's gonna affect his run quite a bit and we just kind of end up being right behind him and for a lot of this lap I was just kind of trying to size up Mike's driving I realized pretty early on that I don't think we were gonna catch Redek. Like, I would have to be right on his tail, pushing him around every one of the straights, but not so close to him around the rest of the track that he is, that, that it's kind of impede, that the pressure is impeding his line. So it would have had to been a really, really calculated race from both of us in order to catch this guy. And it started to look slightly more possible as about halfway through this lap, the gap to Redek hadn't opened up all that much, if at all. However, it seems like a small thing, the fact that I just messed up my run onto the straight. It seems like a very small thing, uh, but what it really means is that I wasn't quite close enough to give this guy any type of push. Not that that would have made the difference, but like that would have had to basically happen in order for us to catch Redek. He also gets a majorly better run than us through Hell Corner, which was something I should have paid more attention to, and you'll see why. At the end of lap two on the Dottinger, we're lifting all of the way down this because I don't want to pass him yet. I think he would be able to stay on my tail. So my plan is just to stay on his tail, just like I did this lap. And then at the end of this lap, I will simply pass him on the Dottinger with slipstream. Simple enough. We have eight seconds to the car behind us. We're under no pressure crossing onto the final lap. Let's just do exactly what we just did and not lift on the Dottinger. It should be an easy overtake is what I was thinking. And I think that he knew I was thinking that because he was making me think that once again sector one something about it I don't I was lifting I was having to break a lot more than I typically would he was taking lines that I don't think were like the fastest lines and I, I decided okay I mean I had already made up in my mind before we started this lap that I wasn't gonna pass this guy and you'll see multiple opportunities where I probably could have a lot of these straights I'll end up lifting and uh making an effort to actually back off of him visually so that he could see that as well and see that I'm not trying to pass him, which may have been the wrong move. My idea was, I just want you to finish this lap, but I think what he saw was, okay, this guy's going to try and pass me on the Dottinger, right? Which he probably already had in his head, but I'm sure that was just reinstating and reaffirming the fact that that was indeed what I'm trying to do. Playing my hands like that and showing it, not a good idea. Uh, this guy took major advantage of me. I thought we were playing checkers. This guy was playing chess. Still on his tail. Like, we're, I don't know, we're probably a second behind my, my best slash optimum lap at this point. Like, overall, I could tell that this guy was either not comfortable on that first sector or he was intentionally slowing down. I think the latter, and we'll explain why. Coming through the fast left-hander, left and I want to highlight this moment. It looks like nothing right here, but... This was probably the closest I was to death, and I want to go back and just highlight this moment. I was super proud of it. I realize I'm going deep. My tire goes into the dirt, and looking at my brake trace here, you can see I actually begin to brake a little bit because I know I'm going deep, so I'm trying to uh, go as not deep as I can, lift off the brakes, and then wait until I'm back on the tarmac to brake again. Does that give us the optimal line? Absolutely not, but did we not die? Yes, wait, no. Yes, we did not die which is super easy to do, and I've seen people do it countless times. Tire in that dirt, and you spin right around, lose traction, uh, can't get the car slowed down quick enough and go into the wall. Just a little moment that I wanted to highlight as it was something I was proud of. So still chasing him down through the uh, triple right and heading into the very slow and uh, tight left-hander here. He opens it up a ton, and he seemed to be doing that a lot almost unnecessarily a lot of the time like it seemed like he was purposefully slowing down just to get like a slightly better exit not that it would make any type of difference honestly i think it's fast maybe it's not faster to take it the way i'm taking it but once again lifting on a straight to avoid overtaking him and this is where it all goes down through hell same thing as last lap except this time i feel like he went through there a little bit faster and the gap immediately opens up and I was thinking, okay, I, yeah, I should have been more conscious of that. I shouldn't have slowed down quite so much. But uh, I was expecting to just be able to catch right back up to him. And I noticed pretty quickly that I'm not doing that. 
through carousel hoping that this is that opportunity where i'm right back on his tail i think i do get a really good run out of here however that slide is going to basically negate any advantage that i could have had and i'm getting a little bit more worried now um still not a big gap but that I, I promise that is not nearly as quick as he took those corners on the last lap and it just continues he, he begins to just constantly pull or not even I mean yeah he is pulling away through here I'm, I'm getting a little bit hectic and I'm also noticing that his lines are taking full advantage of the clean air really using lines that avoid curbs and sometimes travel slightly more distance but rely on a bit more grip and he's making it work fantastically through YouTube corner. We're getting closer to the end here. I need to be within probably around seven tenths by the time we get on to the Dottinger to make that pass. And although I'm not the worst at the final part of the Nordschleife, I know that there are people who are a lot better than me. And the way that this guy just drove that last like 45 seconds, I'm beginning to think that he's one of those people. So he's pulling away from us through the jump. I can't mess this up. This would be a major separator not the best run uh, I think we got on throttle a little bit late there didn't trail off the brakes quite right I mean honestly our whole line after the jump was a big issue there see him swinging to the left there really opening it up and he is just maintaining such good grip I don't know if maybe going slower also had something to do with like slightly saving tires early on he was doing like no sliding throughout the entirety of this race and then maybe he's just immediately pushing we're running out of time second carousel he is not that far ahead of us but arguably my worst corner this final corner that runs on to the dottinger and sadly probably the most important for me i'm about eight tenths behind him as we head into it seven tenths and oh i'm trying my best here not a great not a not a great line through there i think i maybe lifted slightly too late initially there like at the top of that hill by the end of the dottinger i'm not gonna waste your time he had done it he had done it i i, I wasn't close enough my run wasn't good enough i could have looked for a crazy move here but after so long away from Porsche Cup racing this was just amazing to see even being on the losing end of this I mean we crossed the line for the podium but I, I still consider that a loss in in the 1v1 battle amazing like it was so much fun just to see somebody do that to me I was like Ooh, I'm getting goosebumps right now just remembering this moment like seeing somebody execute it that well oh god there we are, P3, another net positive for us on both fronts, both uh, I rating and safety rating, actually zero incidents for us. So really happy about that drive, really happy to be back in the Porsche Cup. I had to drive it a little bit. I was having dreams about it. If you guys enjoyed this video and want to support my channel, please check out some of my other stuff. I'm sure you'll enjoy those as well.